There's quite a bit of controversy around the video that's recently aired with the Riverside County deputy, canine deputy, um, allegedly slamming a canine to the street. We're going to address it in this video. We're going to take it step by step, frame by frame in the video in super slow motion. We're going to look at it from a perspective of objectivity of what happened, exactly what happened. We're going to break it down. We're going to get Steve Stoops, one of the leading experts in the world on police canines, on the phone. We're going to watch it with him step by step. We're going to break it down and we're going to see was there an injustice done here? Was there abuse done here? Or was this a great teaching opportunity with a skilled canine handler doing his job very, very well? Let's get to it. We're going to get Steve on the phone right now. All right. Hey, Steve, how you doing, man? Good, Robert. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. I got you on here because you are the canine expert. You've trained police dogs for what, over, I mean, 40 years, 20, 20 yep. in the military. Yep. Tell me a little bit about you. You saw this clip that's going around from the canine, the Riverside canine guy. Yeah, Riverside County. Yep. And that's Shane. Shane had the other dog, Rudy, that was killed in the line of duty. We could do a whole show on that. Um, that dog won the canine Olympics um, in Las Vegas. Everybody is um, in an uproar about what happened on this video. So I want to play the video. I, you've seen it, but I sent you the clip of just that so we can go second by second and analyze it. And I want you to tell me not, oh, well, maybe also as a canine police officer, but as a trainer of police, police canines, what's going on, what you're seeing and what's the issue? Like what I understand people are upset about it, right? Because they're seeing it from one very shallow dimension, but I want you to walk me through it. Can we do that? Okay. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to put on my screen right now, there's the canine full speed. The guy's backing up. The dog walks right. up, and he kind of goes for the guy's hand. The guy picks the dog. Uh, I don't know if he picks him. He, he uh, puts the dog on the ground and then walks him back. That entire clip is, I'm seeing about 14 seconds, 14 seconds and 13 frames, right? Yep. So let's look at that for a second. Now, if you look at it fast, it's it's almost over before it starts, right? So in other words, right. it, the whole thing starts, I'm here, I'm fast forwarding um, at about five seconds and 15 frames. I'm going to just go through it here slowly. Um, at about 520, I see the dog turning to kind of like mouth the, the officer's uh, right wrist. Do you see that right. 523 yep. about so and then yep. now he, I don't the officer's not taking his eyes off of the suspect which I think is probably is that protocol or should he be watching his dog or is he should be watching the suspect um, I think this guy would win my handler of the month award because he's doing both he's multitasking uh, in this situation yeah handling the dog uh, and also acting as a competent backup officer Okay, so so in this situation, as a police officer, we do want him to keep his eyes on the suspect so he would know when and if to deploy the dog. Am I right? Right, and that the dog isn't a normal tool. He's not a widget. He has a heartbeat mm -hmm. of his own, yeah. and so this officer focuses on the behavior of both the dog and the suspect and mm -hmm. the backup officer, so he's, he's multitasking. Okay, so at 523, the dog is connected on his wrist, or, or at least we, we see the, the, the mouth is around his wrist. So I'm going to go a couple yeah. frames forward so people in the audience can see this. Now by six seconds, which is, you know, we're looking at 24 frames per second. So by six seconds mm -hmm. from 523, so you're looking at maybe a fifth of a second, um, this officer notices it. I'm going frame by frame. He still hasn't taken his eyes. Now he's starting to look down at the dog, and he's doing a correction on this dog, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I see right. this dog... From what I'm seeing, and tell me if I'm wrong, please, um, the dog is pushing off of his back legs and is kind of setting himself off the ground. Or is the police officer lifting him off the ground? I can't tell. I'm, I'm confused between the two. I'm thinking he's put, the dog is pushing himself off the ground just as much as he's being lifted. Yeah, and, and that's uh, six of one, half dozen of the other. Uh -huh. um, uh, the dog... What I'm noticing is the dog is uh, trying a little bit of handler aggression, which is a no-go in this profession. And I, 
I laud the handler for making this a teachable moment for the dog. And I see it as an admonishment more than a punishment. Yeah. And our, our mutual friend, Mike Reaver, actually just sent me a clip um, from, a, from an article. And he, he is saying exactly what you're saying. He's saying um, the way Shane handled it was quick and to the point it was a correction, Reaver said. It did not exceed the limit of force. Would you say the same thing? Or, or, or? Yeah, not even close to cruelty. Um, people, you know, want to be anthropomorphic. Mm -hmm. uh, but imagine if that dog was in the pack and did that to another dog, a superior dog in the pack, mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't be an admonishment. It would be a punishment slash admonishment. Yeah. So, um, and if you notice that dog is not cowering, uh, from the officer yeah. and when they're walking back to the car, the dog's happy wagging his tail. Yeah. But that officer was spot on teaching that because mm -hmm. that is a no go with a police dog to show handler aggression because it puts everybody in a precarious situation. And I think Shane, was awesome in the way he handled that. And mm -hmm. I only hope that his, his leadership on his department are standing behind him because he was 100% spot on. Yeah, I, I agree. So I played that while you were talking about that. So I want to back up again a little bit more because I want to take this frame by frame with you because you're the expert on this. Um, right here, after he connects with the wrist, Shane lifts the, the, the dog or the dog. And it's like you said, six, one half, the, other. The, the dog probably pushed himself off Shane has with his left hand on the back of the tactical harness, which is an easy controlled piece on the dog. And then he puts the dog onto the ground. Now, putting the dog on the ground like this, in my opinion, from what I've seen with you, it kind of puts him in an immobile position. So the dog can't fail, right? We don't want the dog to continue the bite. So right. I think he put him in a place to go, hey, knock it off, right? Right. right. So he's protecting and the welfare of the dog. But my question to you is this, Steve. Let's say these uh, radical people who are criticizing uh, an officer who's you know doing his job. Um, let's say he would play it out and say, "Okay, you know what? I'm not allowed to do anything. I'm going to um, I'm going to let this dog bite me." What happens to that dog? It's been my experience that that can manifest into a a uh, a behavior, a door that we don't want to open. And Shane was. Uh, Johnny on the spot admonishing that behavior and yeah. that will mitigate that happening again and 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 in a much more intense situation that they might run into and yeah. you know what uh, I, Shane's a big guy he could bench press a house yeah. uh, he was not over the top with that dog at all um, yeah I don't see it. how I'm, it I'm, should have been handled I, I'm coming at it from a purely like a, a, a hum, humane humanitarian level like an abuse level and i'm coming to you from the police level so i think we're both agreeing that this picture here and i'm gonna play it again um at full speed he brings the dog up between his legs dog's got a guy but the dog is a little distracted right like the dog wasn't doing everything and so this was a teachable moment because the dog wasn't deployed but he was mm -hmm. a, very easily able to again i'm playing it again the guy's backing up the dog comes forward um, Why are you detaining him? And yeah, I'm seeing it again. So here he's the, the dog gets put on the ground and he holds him there for a brief moment. He kind of just to gather his his position, so the dog is not mm -hmm. biting in any way, shape, or form. I mean, what I'm seeing is he protecting the dog from a worst fate or outcome if he would have let him bite him. Uh, absolutely. Um, he he got on it before it turned into a code red, mm -hmm. and. Um, it was a firm, uh, uh, firm, positive. Well, I don't want to use the word positive. Um, well, if if you look look a, at Steve, firm, wait, if you look at it firm, in this, the scientific term of positive is adding something. So it would be a positive punishment. No, he added a correction. So I mean, yeah, it right. is a positive. It's a learning experience, isn't it? Yep. yep. It was firm and fair and effective. Yeah. And if, if the so, dog would have bit him, so you're the trainer now. Let's say he comes back to you and says, Steve, um, we had the dog out. Um, the dog turned. He bit me. I've got you know a bunch of nerve damage in my, in my right hand now. Um, yep, won't work for six months. Won't work for – what happens to the dog? If that's allowed to, if that's allowed to manifest and, 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 the, and the handler hadn't handled it like Shane did, uh, that problem gets worse, and that could lead to ultimately maybe uh, – 
the dog being fired, maybe even being destroyed. I, I, I truly believe he mitigated future uh, unwanted behavior from that dog. That's and a- nobody loves dogs more than than you and I. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I don't, I've never met Shane. I know of him, and I know he's an outstanding dog handler that loves dogs. I just feel bad that uh, he's facing um, the outcry that he's facing right now. And yeah. it's just by by well-meaning people that don't understand police dogs. Uh, these dogs are high drive and the things that make them a pain in the neck make them awesome at the moment of truth. Yep. So we need that dog to be aggressive in an enforcement way, but we can't allow that dog to run amok. And like I said, several times, Shane mitigated that. Yeah. So all in all, your um, position on this, you're the expert, you're the, you're the, 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 the one of the top people in the world when it comes to this mm-hmm. field. Um, give me your your 30-second uh, dissertation on what Shane did and what happened to this dog. I see a fluid situation where they don't know what this guy was up to. Uh, yes, he seemed to be compliant, but every time somebody has ever tried to hurt me, uh, most of the time they were compliant right before they did try to hurt me. Mm. So he managed that dog through a unpredictable situation. And he did an outstanding job of correcting that dog when it made the move for his hand. Well, you're the expert. That's all I wanted to hear. I appreciate yeah. that very, very much, Steve. Thank you. Yeah, and it goes down to our sausage analogy that you and I like to yeah. watch. <laughs> I knew you were going to bring that up. Yeah. Good police work might be, it's like sausage. It might be unpleasant to watch, but when it's done, everybody loves the taste. So yeah. kudos to Shane and, uh, uh, I hope, like I said, I hope they're standing behind him. I think they should. I think he did a fine job. I don't see, I don't see any abuse in this. I don't think anybody, I, by the way, I showed it to Janet and Janet's like, Oh, well, what, what am I waiting for? You know, the dog was corrected. The dog was put on his side. I mean, he could have done a lot. He could have kicked the dog, punched the dog. It didn't do anything. Yeah. There's one slap on the dog as he's going away. I've watched this in slow motion a, a hundred times, you know, and again, I think we need to get away from this attitude of everything is hunky dory because when the proverbial you know what hits the fan you know we need guys like shane and we need dogs that are going to go keep us safe and i saw no malicious intent on shane's part whatsoever neither did i neither did i oh well i mean it means a lot coming from you because you're you've definitely seen this you know countless times more than anybody who's going to watch this video and i thank you for your time on that man thank you well thank you for being a truth teller robert yeah. That, that we need more of this. Well, that's what we do, man. So there it is for you guys. Broken down by Steve Stoops, in my opinion, in the opinion of many, many people, one of the world's leading experts on police and military canons, having trained hundreds of dogs, worked with countless dogs over the last 40 years in police canine work. The, the expert in the field. There's probably nobody better at it. It's broken down for you. It gives you the real real time, and real facts. Look at it from that perspective, and you'll see this in a much, much different way. This all ended well because this officer, Shane Day, did his job properly. He diffused a potentially dangerous situation. It could have ended up much worse with what Steve and I discussed on the, on the call. He diffused the situation, corrected the dog, made it a teaching moment, helped the dog to learn. The dog has not been on the force that long. No one was hurt. No dog was hurt, and we can, came out with a really fair outcome. The dog wagging his tail, going back to the car. That's what we're looking for. And when we step away from the emotional triggers of the Internet and the social justice warriors, what we see is real work done by real men. And it's done properly, it's done effectively, and it's done to keep us safer. Training your dog doesn't need to be complicated. In fact, it should be fun. When training is fun for both you and your dog, your dog succeeds and you enjoy training. That is what I've developed into my online dog training. Whether you're looking for advanced problem solving, some basic obedience or competitive obedience and tricks, whether you're dealing with aggression, problem solving like jumping on people, leash pulling or anything else, my online dog training covers exactly that. There are more than 170 lessons, more than 60 hours of instruction designed to help you better understand your dog and solve the problems that plague you now. Join the thousands of people who have developed a better relationship with their dog through my online dog training. 